And of all the things that happen this week, we have little boys all over America that don't know who dad is, that have never, don't have any clue what a dad's going to be. And one of these days when they're 17, 18, 20, and they become a dad, they won't know what to do. And it's the same in the church. And that's why we do what we do today, is so the little boys can see that it's okay for men to worship. It's okay for men to sing. It's okay for us to cry. It's okay for us to clap and to dance and act silly all in the presence of the Lord. That's why we do this. There really is a, a, a purpose behind it. It goes on and it says this. What do we do if we're at an impasse? What do we do? Somebody's got to hit the gas. Somebody's got to hit the brake. Gentlemen, that responsibility, not that privilege, that responsibility falls on you. And I will give you a family example. When the opportunity was presented to me to come here to serve, um, we were living in celebration. And it was very obvious that my family was going to have to relocate to the east side if I was to accept this assignment. And some of you, moving is a cool thing. For my family, moving is not a good thing. I've been married 25 years. This is my 18th address. My daughter is almost 16, and I think this is her ninth address. And when the time came to accept this opportunity, I knew that we would have to move. And when I brought that up at my house, it wasn't real popular. In, in, in fact, I wasn't real popular. <laughs> And the, the move is exciting and it's fun to get to know new people, but it also means severing ties with people that you're very close to and leaving what you're very familiar with. And my family just wasn't gun-ho excited about the adventure, quite honestly. But being a husband and a father, trying to follow God, what I had to model for my family was, I hear you, I agree with you. Yes, this will hurt. Yes, this isn't fun. No, yeah, it's going to be a lot of work. Okay, I had to acknowledge all of their feelings. I couldn't discount and go, well, you're a kid. What do you know? I couldn't do that. That wouldn't be right. Because that's not submitting to their need. And their need is to be heard. And their need is to be valued. And I'll be honest with you. It was a probably a three-month process for us to slowly get used to the idea that we were going to move again. Okay? But what I tried to model for my kids in that is, I'm not moving because I just love to move. I'm moving because I'm trying to follow God. I'm trying to do what God wants me to do, and I can't do that from 33 minutes away. I'm sorry. And you know what I hope will happen? Is that one of these days, God's going to ask them to move, and they're going to say, God, I don't want to move, but I know I've got to, because I remember when my mom had to. That's the difference between dictatorship and leadership. And I will tell you this, that had my family said to me, absolutely not, we're never moving from here, I wouldn't be your pastor. I wouldn't, because I have to have their support. And if it meant a rift between me and my kids forever, I love you, but I have to spend my life with them. And I know you understand. And I was willing to say no. But I thank them. Because they made a sacrifice too. They made a sacrifice so we could do this together. To me, one of the first times in our lives that whole process really played out like it's supposed to. It really did. It wasn't any fighting, yelling, arguing, threatening. I wasn't putting my big heavy foot down. I tried to lovingly walk all of us through the process, including me. And it worked. It'll work for you, too. A lot of us see the, the flow chart, if you will, kind of like this. We, we kind of see the hierarchy of God at the top, and then the men, and then the women, and the kids. But the truth is, it's really more like a circle. It, it's not like this, where somebody's in charge. It, it's where we're all around the table. And, and we kind of follow each other around the table, as opposed to having to go get permission. It, it's a partnership instead of a dictatorship. And what that means is there are times we should submit to the needs of our children. Sometimes we should submit to the need of our spouse. 
sometimes we continue to submit to God, of course, but it's a circle around the table, not one person calling all the shots. That really is what the Bible is trying to say to us. And things have to be in the proper order. You've got to be in the table in the right order. Sometimes the reality is we, we like the flow chart because we always have somebody to, to follow, but sometimes the game we play is more like the buck stops there instead of the buck stops here. It's easy for us to point at everybody else. You've heard it all week. This is what's wrong with America. This is what's wrong with that guy. This is what's wrong with this lady. This is what's wrong with, you know, you know, come on. You know. But, but in the family, there are many bucks. And there are many stops. And for me, I have to assume the responsibility for what I do, who I am. That's part of being an adult, right? And that's what we have to teach our kids, right? It's responsibility. So I would just say there are lots of bucks, but there's also lots of stops. Family works best when there's accountability and responsibility together in all levels. Being accountable to your children, to be able to go back to your children and say, Mom and Dad went and spent too much money last month, so this month we don't get to go do the fun stuff. You know, Mom and Dad did something stupid at work, and now Mom's lost her job. You know, that's being honest. That's being honest. It's being accountable to your kids. Let them know. Last, I would say this. The family works best when it's led out of love and concern for everybody else, not for yourself. It's when it's led out of love, meaning that you're listening and that you're paying attention. I, I don't know where your family is today in the process. What I know is in my family, it kind of ebbs and flows. For a while it's really good, and then we get the rough spot. And then it gets really good, and we get another rough spot. Then we get six rough spots in a row, and then it finally gets good. And, and I think that's called life. It really is. And what I know is we have to go back to what we know is true. And what is true is that this process works. This process works, and it works really well. If, the, if there's some of you here and think that your house aren't so good, if you'll contact me, I have a friend of mine that does Christian counseling, and she's amazing. And she's got a whole team of people. And if that's something that you would like, I, I'd be happy to refer uh, you to her. Um, and, and she's a pro. I mean, she's a pro. She, she's very good. Because I really think sometimes we just need to talk about stuff. We just need to find a way to understand and hear differently and say things differently. If that's where you are, man, drop me an email so I can so I can send you on to the really, really what, what I would ask you is this question. Gentlemen, how well are you following? Ladies, how well are you following? And kids, how well are you following? Because to be a Christ follower doesn't mean just to believe. It means to live. It means to be different. Lord, thank you for the challenge today and the encouragement we have of uh, finding the opportunity to become like you and to, uh, to have our families become amazing representatives and examples of you. Uh, pray today, God, that you would uh, inspire us to, to listen closely to, to what you're asking us to do and what you're asking us to follow. And there's some friends here today, God, that are brand new at this and they're taking their first steps. And, Ask for the, uh, the determination and courage that it will take to make those adjustments. Then we have other people here who walk with you.